goes to the next lesson and he goes to the next illustration to give this concept of ignorance and that philosophy of ignorance matures a bit more and here our friend uddalaka as our guru uddalaka as you know he's he is sitting in this beautiful ashrama of his surrounded by natural beauty and river is flowing just in his backyard so he now says let me give you a lesson in geography i have given you a les lesson in natural uh, biology now i'll give you a lesson in geography based on this ashrama to uh, get you to understand what this ignorance actually means and he goes on to say imaha somya nadyaha purastat prachaha sardante paschat pratishtyaha taha samudrat samudram eva apiyanti sa samudra eva bhavati ta yata tatra na viduhu iyam aham asmi iyam aham asmi iti evam eva kalu somya imaha sarvaha prajaha सत आगम्य नविदु सत आगछामह इति एंड दैट इज वेयर ही स्टॉप्स दैट एंड देन ही अगेन गोस त यह व्याग्रो वा सिंहो वा वृको वा वराहो वा कीटो वा पतंगो वा दंशो वा मशको वा यद यद भवन्ति तत् तदा भवन्ति सो इन दिस शॉर्ट सेंटेंस उद्दालक नॉट ओनली टॉक्स अबाउट हिज आश्रम बट ही इज एक्चुअली गिविंग अ लेसन ऑफ इंडियन ज्योग्राफी what is that so let let us go through this beautiful section with the subsequent slides so what has he said in the in the first line he said imaha somya nadyah nadyah means what rivers nadhi is river why is river called nadhi and we have done this before in sanskrit everything is etymological isn't it so why is a river called nadhi nadhanyati iti nadihi that when it moves makes a pleasant sound that is the river whereas the pond is still whereas the running water makes a nice pleasant noise nadanyati nadha nadanyati iti nadihi so he takes his nadyah okay and he says look the indian subcontinent look at our bharatvarsha and he is taking this example because our friend shwetaketu must have studied some geography in gurukula because those days in gurukula gave a, a, a comprehensive education not only in adhyatma vidya but also all the laukika vidya along with geography history and everything else so he said look look at these rivers nadyah plural yeah purastat prachaha sandante paschat pratichaha Okay, so let's get the Sanskrit words. They are very nice. So look at the direction. So to understand this uh, this this particular line, we need to know what are the Sanskrit names for directions. So you have north, you have south, you have east, and you have west. Then of course you have northwest, northeast, southeast, and southwest. Okay. Now the beauty of our Vedas is in many Upanishads they talk about directions in great detail. and they have actually given abhimani devatas he a, a demigod who controls a particular direction yeah a direction in in the universe even that is discussed in the upanishads so let us take what is east east is called purva or prachi what is west paschima or pratichi what is south dakshina or yamya what is north uttara or udichi so these are the basic sanskrit words that i'm sure many of us are familiar with but for the context of this particular section of the upanishad we need to remember purva or prachi which is east paschima or pratichi is west why what does uddalaka says imaha somya nadyah purastat prachyah syandante prachyah okay so what he says is look in the indian subcontinent you have several rivers the rivers that are on the eastern side of the indian subcontinent they all move towards the east and they merge in the ocean in the east paschat pratichyah so paschat paschima west so the rivers on the western side of the indians of bharatvarsha they all go move to the move towards the west and they join the ocean in the west okay so that is what our uddalaka has said there is no controversy in this verse because you have purastat 
you have Paschad, East and West. And look at the, the beauty of our education on the Vedic times, because the Rishis and our geography was perfectly fine-tuned in the Vedic times. Because if you look at the current Indian geography and look at the rivers, there are Eastern rivers and there are Western rivers. All the Eastern rivers will only go to the Eastern side of this ocean. Now, of course, it's called Bay of Bengal. Yeah, but that, this is just a huge volume of water. So all these rivers, look at these rivers, Damodara, okay, Mahanadi, Godavari, Krishna, Kaveri, all these rivers that we are familiar with, okay, they all start on the eastern side and they move towards the east and they join the ocean on the eastern side. Then you have the rivers on the west, Sabarmati, Mahi, Narmada, Tapi. So you will know all these rivers you might have heard. They all start from the west and they go to the west and they go and join this volume of water on the west. And here is the, 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 the geography here because Dakshina and Uttara is not mentioned here at all because the Vedic Rishis knew the rivers in and out in the Vedic times because there is no river that goes and joins in the north to some ocean because there is no ocean in the north. Similarly, there is nothing called a southern river that goes to the south of the ocean. It is either the east or the west. And these bodies of water on the east and west, when they meet, you just call it as, uh, you know, Cape whatever. Yeah. So that is what it is. So they, they got it perfectly right. And what Uddalak has done is he has taken the simple example with the river flowing in his backyard and he talks this big philosophy of not only geography, but in geography, he brings philosophy and he says, look how the eastern rivers go to the east, the western rivers go to the west. But in the Vedic times, all these rivers were not called River Trent or River Thames or River whatever else that we have in the UK, but they all had sacred names. Indian rivers were called Ganga, Yamuna, Godavari, Tungabhadra, Kaveri, etc. And they are all worshipped. Yeah, so I have a question here for all of us to think about as to why in Indian India rivers have got these names of, you know, these are all devatas. If you go to Vedas, you'll have all these devatas who come in various places. So these are all names of various devatas and the rivers have got the names of this. Why do we think that is the case? What is the sign? What is the what is the philosophy behind that, that, the, that we, we've got all these rivers with such holy names? Any any contributions here, please? Why is the river called Kaveri or why is the river called Yamuna? Why have you said that? Okay, so I'll take this on. So in the in the in Vedic times and even now, rivers are, have, have always been considered as auspicious and they are worshipped because it is it is a Vedic tradition in the Sanatana Dharma to say that each river has got an Abhimani Devata. Yeah, that body of water that flows from the Himalayas and goes down the Haridwar and Rishikesh is called Ganga because the Abhimani Devata of that is Ganga Devi. And similarly, Yamuna Devi, Godavari, Tungabhadra and so on. So reminding you again, our founding father, Veda Vyasa has got a sutra there. Abhimani Vyapadeshastu Visesha Anugati Bhyam. So whenever Apaha, various rivers names come, it actually denotes the Abhimani Devatas. So this is what you need to understand to understand what is the philosophy that Uddalaka is talking about. Because remember in the second example, it was Madhu, which is Jada. Okay. Now he's going to talk about a Chetana and how a Chetana does not know something. And what is that? So the Chetana that he's talking about here is the Abhimani Devatas of these Eastern rivers and the Western rivers. And I hope that makes sense because we need to have that mindset when we read the Vedas. Adi Deva, Adi Bhuta, Adi Deva, Adi Atma, Adi Agnya, and all those things that Krishna has asked us to read, to remember. So we have to take that Adi Deva view here as to what these rivers are. They are actually the names of the sentient beings called Ganga, Yamuna, Godavari, Tungabhadra, and so on. 
So that is the first line. So to give you that intro to this verse, I had to go into the geography of uh, the rivers of India briefly, and also to talk about the Abhimani Devatas who preside over these rivers. At least that is the Sanatana Dharma view. Okay. So what does he say? Taha samudrat samudrameva apiyanti sa samudra eva bhavati. This is a beautiful line. Taha samudrat samudrameva apiyanti sa samudra eva bhaviyanti. Samudra eva bhavati. Let's look at the first two words. Taha samudrat. So he says, these rivers, these bodies of water, they all have their origin from the ocean. Yeah. Taha samudrat. The words are very clear. River has its origin from the ocean. So we might argue, no, rivers do not have, say, Ganga, for example, does not have an origin from, from, uh, from, from the ocean. It has its origin from its glacier. We might argue that. But actually, if you go back, if say for or you can take an example of Kaveri, and you can say Kaveri does not have its origin in the ocean. Kaveri, there is a source there, and from there it is coming. No, our rishis are extremely scientific. They knew how the origins of rivers. They knew about evaporation. They knew about condensation, and they know how the rainfall happens. And their view there is: there is the sun, there is the ocean. There is evaporation, that condensation becomes the clouds. The clouds go to the mountain and there you have a rainfall and the rain falls on the mountain. And if it freezes, it becomes a glacier at some point. If it does not freeze, it will flow down as a river. Okay, so Taha Samudrat me is extremely important words there. Taha Samudrat means the river, the body of water we call as this river actually has its origin from the ocean. Okay, then what happens to the, the history of this river? Samudra Meva Apiyanti. So this river Apiyanti means it goes and merges. Yeah, apiyanti. It, it does not say it becomes the ocean. It goes and joins. It goes and merges with the ocean. Samudra meva apiyanti. Okay. So in, these words are important because I think that is where the philosophy is there. Yeah, that is where our philosophy is there. And I'll come to that in the next slide. You will be able to appreciate why this breaking of words, splitting the sentences are important. The reason being, Rivers get their origin from the ocean through evaporation, and they eventually the same river goes and merges with the ocean. But the ocean is always the ocean. Saha samudra eva bhavati. So the ocean is the ocean. Evaporation, some body of water may, may, uh, may go up and then river and then comes. So you have the rivers and you have the oceans. So the rishis actually made a distinction between oceans and rivers. Yeah. Why? If you look at these words carefully, it's very clear. Taha samudrat, samudra meva apiyanti, saha samudra eva bhavati. So what does that mean? Ocean remains an ocean. River remains the river. And in physics or chemistry, you want to look at it. River molecules and ocean molecules do not become one. There are the river molecules that are there and there are the ocean molecules that are there. And that is exactly what our Uddalaka is saying. Saha samudra eva bhavati, but these fellows samudra eva apiyanti. Okay, hope that makes sense. I've given you another illustration here. Samudra meva apiyanti from a, from a Google map where a river actually goes and joins the sea, whereas saha samudra eva bhavati. Now, the reason why this is important and how our rishis were able to make these differences is nowadays, and I was doing some, some research this morning about uh, the, the modern views of rivers and oceans and how they merge. And when the river enters the sea, whether the river water is still definable within the ocean or it all merges so much that we don't know which is the ocean river, which is the water of the ocean, which is the water of the river. And there are some interesting things that, that are there out there. Do some Google searches because there are some undersea rivers that have been described. And there is this famous uh, Mexican example, Quinote Angelita. Yeah. So where there is a phenomenon called Hallucine phenomenon. And what that is, is 
the salinity of water okay so you have the river that has low low amount of salt in it ocean has high amount of salt in it so because it has got high amount of salt it is more denser whereas river is less denser so when the river enters the ocean the less dense water and the higher less dense river water and the higher dense ocean water there is an interface okay and current view is there is this hydrogen sulfide which actually separates the river and the sea i hope you find this interesting because i think our rishis got this spot on saying that when the river enters the ocean the river river remains the river the ocean remains the ocean yeah saha samudra eva bhavati okay now the next word becomes interesting next line so if you hold on to that idea so now the ganges the yamuna the kaveri they've all gone to the ocean so those water molecules have gone into the ocean so once they are in the ocean uddalaka takes this unusual example for us in the modern day life but in the vedic times it was assumed that all these are abhimani devatas and uddalaka says ta yata tatra na viduhu yam ahamasmi yam ahamasmi iti so when this yamuna water goes to the ocean ganga water goes to the ocean kaveri water goes to the ocean uddalaka says you know when they are all in the ocean you know these abhimani devatas who are there they are themselves not able to recognize this body of river water is mine this body of river water is mine and so on so that is the example there तत्र न विदुहु इयम अहमस्मि सो दैट इज अ सेंटियंट बीइंग देयर सेइंग आई डोंट नो व्हिच बॉडी ऑफ दैट वाटर इज माइन सेज गंगा यमुना सेज व्हिच बॉडी ऑफ वाटर इज माइन सेज यमुना सो दिस इज एन अनयूजुअल एग्जांपल बट आई हैव सेड इन द वैदिक टाइम्स इट वाज अ वेल नोन फैक्ट दैट द रिवर्स हैड अभिमानित अभिमानी देवतास एंड दे शुड बी वर्शिप अब उद्दाल का सेस लाइक इवन द अभिमानी देवतास डू नॉट नो व्हिच बॉडी ऑफ वाटर इज माइन व्हाट इज दैट टेल अस दैट टेल्स अस अबाउट द कांसेप्ट ऑफ इग्नोरेंस सो इन द सेकंड एग्जांपल मधु वाज अ जड़ा सो इट नॉट हैविंग इग्नोरेंस इज एन एक्सेप्टेड फैक्ट but uddalaka takes a sentient being even see even the river goddesses sometimes don't recognize which body of water is there so even there there is an ignorance so he steps up the argument about the role of ignorance here so that is the key concept there is ignorance yeah evameev kalu somya imaha sarvaha prajaha sata agamya naviduhu sata agachchamah iti beautiful example there if you take the samudra as the ocean that is the supreme being yeah even samudra the etymology of samudra is sam udruktha udruktha means uh, a time of udruktha means it is a spontaneous overflow of um, bliss and knowledge samya kudruktha so that is called samudra samudra is the name of the supreme in the vedas he celebrated a samudra Okay, because he has got eternal, spontaneous bliss and knowledge. Yeah, so that is the beauty of that word samudra. So same thing Uddala ka says, "Eva meva kalu somya imaha sarvaha praja prajaha prajaha mans jivas sata agamya na viduhu sata agaccha mahiti." So during creation, these all these jivas who are there in the supreme tummy, they all go up and they go into samsara. And during pralaya, what happens? They again go back. and join in and go and uh, you know spend time in pralaya in the supreme stami so that exactly is the illustration of those rivers and using that river illustration he says look these jivas that is the state of jivas as well yeah and when you look at this we should always look at internal evidence within the chandogya upanishad yeah? and what did we do that in, in i think it is in session 4 or 5 what did we look at sanmulaha somya imaha sarvaha prajaha sada ayatanaha sat pratishtaha sanmulaha in samsara sada ayatanaha and their final abode is sat pratishtaha so everything fits in very well again okay? what Uddalaka is saying is that is the state of the jivas. We have come from the supreme. We will go back to the supreme in pralaya. But we do not. We are. We don't. We are. We are running our lives, not even understanding these truths. And that is what Veda Vyasa said when he said atato Brahma Jignasa, and then he gave a definition of this Brahman as Janma Dhyasya Yataha. He who is the creator is the supreme creator and other things. 
that is eightfold dispensation is brahman and the same way that vyasa said in the fourth adhyaya jagat vyapara varjam and we have saw deen the sutras jagat vyapara varjam means this business of cosmic dispensation belongs only to the supreme and nobody else yeah this is our founding father of vedanta darshana telling us very clearly that the creatorship of the universe is only with brahman not with jivas okay so i hope you find this illustration of uddalaka interesting because the jivas are not understanding that they are also like this river they come from this ocean and they will also go back to this ocean they don't understand exactly like that ganges river and yamuna river that is the concept of ignorance uddalaka okay so the previous verse essentially gives you an idea of creatorship of the supreme and creation which is a central concept of sanatana dharma a creation that is real if it is an unreal creation i don't think we should all waste time talking about this creation everywhere in the upanishads creatorship of the lord is a key key concept yeah and we have done this before i just want to do this avrittihi asakrutu upadesha because that is what brahma sutra has said revise again and again in every opportunity you should revise and that is what we are going to do in mandukya upanishad you know go back to these verses we talked about four possible views of creation transformation of brahman illusion spontaneous or ichcha matram prabho srishtihi and then what were all the words there illusion vikalpitaha was used here vikalpitaha means it is a misconception but icha matram vi nishtitaha that is the confirmed conclusion that this creatorship is from brahman and it is his satya sankalpa it is desire to create and then the same mandukya upanishad talked about three possible reasons of creation isn't it go back to those 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 sessions there it said his enjoyment it is a play and it is his intrinsic nature to create so we need to grasp and keep all those all those ideas with us let's look at gita and i've got two verses and i would love if we have volunteers to recite this please can somebody recite the gita chapter 7 10th verse please which is very important and again chapter 14 the third and the fourth verse so can i call upon one of you to pick up the 7 10 and the other friend to pick up 14 3 and 4 please who is going to do that madhu yeah. i can do 7 10 harish yeah go for it harish बीज मं सर्वूतानाथनम बुद्धिमतानाथनम Okay, so I am the seed. I am the creator. It is from I am the source. It is from me all these creation. Bhutas, there is Jiva Ganas, for example. They are all coming from me. Remember the Imaha Somya when he talks about Nadi and he says, you know, these Prajahas also have come from the same. So that is exactly what Gita is talking about. Who is going to take up verse fourteen, please, three and four? go for it no okay so i'll uh, just carry on oh ma shila ji yes i was waiting for you thank you go on mama yonit mahat brahma tasmin garbham dadamyaham sambhava sarva bhutanam tato bhavati bharata sarva yoni shukaunteya murtaya samhavantiyaha उपनिषदेक्टलीस from this examples of nadi and how the origins of the nadi is is exactly what krishna has said yeah what is the nature of his creation mundaka upanishad again has told us that isn't it yato urna bihi srujate grihnate cha yata prithivyam oshadayaha sambhavanti yata sataha purushat keshalomani tata aksharat sambhavati iha vishwam 
and again mundaka it's also called atharvana upanishad that talks about how this is the supreme creation is an efficient cause there is no partiality or cruelty in his creation and it is a spontaneous act as how a hair spontaneously comes from our body surface yeah. and then there are other two important verses that we will touch up in the next slide and i uh, hopefully um, um it'll I, i'll be able to illustrate that in the second slide from now on i think there is this famous verse on taitre upanishad and of course the skanda purana so now the question is what happens to the ignorant who is ignorant of these truths of you know our roots and where we are eventually going to go what happens to the ignorant who is ignorant of these truths ஐ <laughs> ஜன்மாதிஸ் there is space crafts that has just gone outside our solar system this universe is so vast did we create it so we need to have that pragmatic you know rational view on this no we did not create it saha atma he created everything atatvamasi you are not that supreme creator shvetaketo shed your ego because you are not him you did not create the universe you do not control anything but shweta keto tatvamasi you are similar to him you are dependent on him but you you is tvam tvam tat here that is you are in him you are from him you are because of him tasmin tvamasi tasma tvamasi tasmai tvamasi tasya tvamasi so when you use this sapta so prathama here and take the illustration so a philo- why does uddalaka give an illustration he gives an illustration so that we understand some philosophical truth so if you take that illustration the river comes from the ocean and it goes to the ocean and the river is there because of the ocean okay so that is exactly what here it is twam tat tasmin tasma tasmai twamasai so you, that is how you are also you are in him you come from him you will you are because of him twamasi shvetaketo iti so that is what uddalaka says in the third example okay so i just want to do a little bit of recap on this Uh, simha avalokana nyaya as you know as lions we are all lions of sadhana sanatana dharma so we should always look back before we move forwards so saya esha anima aitad atme vidam sarvam tat satyam sa atma tatvam asi shweta keto so in the first example the first example was of the bird and the post what was discussed there dependence is our constitutional position that is our fundamental position and in example 2 and 3 what uddalaka has done is ignorance of our dependence is the root cause of samsara and suffering not only of our dependence when we know our dependence then we will have the knowledge of where we have come from how are we sustaining where are we going to go back what is our uh, eventual destination all those things come next once we understand the concept of dependence but we are ignorant of all that so that ignorance is the root cause of samsara and suffering and these two examples are beautiful if you look at it very very carefully as to what is it that uddalaka is saying so this drops of nectar in the honeycomb that is the stiti if 
if honeycomb is the is the is supreme being and individual droplets are jivas the jivas are constantly they are placed on this on the supreme they are constantly with the supreme there is no point in the history of jivas where they have been separated from the supreme they are always with the supreme so in our samsara state when we are in this existence our state is that that is the stiti we are always in companion with the supreme and also in moksha we are constantly in companion with the supreme says the the shastras and in the second exa- in the third example what has he talked about he spoke about our creation that we have all come from the stu- supreme in the sense the supreme has made material uh, things and we acquire a body and then we come so it is our utpatti and what is our samhara or destruction eventually we shed our material bodies and we go to his realm and stay with him yeah so these two examples are actually giving you an illustration of stiti moksha utpatti and samhara and that is what taitariya upanishad def- defines this brahman as yato va imani bhutani jayante yena jatani jivanti yat prayanti abhisam vishanti tad vijignyasasva tad brahmeti so these four that i have told you here is summarized in the taitariya upanishad Shvetashvatar also says the same thing. Samsara moksha, moksha stiti bandha hetuhu. So he who is the cause of all this, that is this Brahman. Skanda Purana, of course, gives the all eight examples. Utpatti, stiti, samhara, niyatir, jnanam, avrittihi, bandha, moksha, cha, purushad, yasmat, sa, harire, karat. That is the final say of what the Supreme Brahman does. eightfold dispensation but talking about the four in the example 2 and 3 and look at this merge the merging yeah how they go and we have spent a lot of time talking about this annam aap and tejas if you remember so there was this section that we discussed and i want to remind you here yasya somya purushasya preyato vang manasi sampadye sampadyate manah prane prane tejasi tejaha parasyam devataya so when when we eventually finish our innings here these uh, the vak devata merges into manas manas into prana prana into lakshmi and lakshmi then takes you to the supreme brahman okay that is your how you go and join the ocean so uddalaka does not is 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 very consistent in how he explains to his son there is no inconsistency at all in what he is talking about with the examples that he is going here and similarly sanmulaha somya imaha sarvaha prajaha sada yatanaha sat pratishtaha again he has said the same thing and he is illustrating this with more examples for our benefit so internal research within the chapter also will make our understanding of what uddalaka is saying much more interesting yeah so do you know this all these eight forms of life okay so here is this is why i put this here the above verse comes only twice that is for illustration 2 and illustration 3 this ta iha vyagro va simho va vrko va varaho va kito va patango va damsho va mashako va yad yad bhavanti tat tada bhavanti this verse comes only in illustration 2 and 3 because it talks about ignorance okay as uddalaka you know takes us to higher levels of philosophies he will be talking about other truths but he is now telling us when there is ignorance this is what happens to us hindu knowledge academy.com will celebrate vedic culture and present its philosophies to the modern hindu in an accessible format our ancient heritage is our greatest strength through preservation and dissemination together let us spread positivity in the world thank you for listening and welcome to hindu knowledge academy